Okay, we'll get started. Hi, I'm Liz Fennessy. I'm the chair of the Machine Shop Village Neighborhood Conservation District Commission. Um, calling this meeting to order. We're conducting a remote meeting and I have several members of the committee with me plus the applicant and their team. Uh, I'm required, uh, oh sorry, please note that this meeting is going to be ending at 6.50 promptly because uh, North Andover CAM needs to transition over to the next meeting. If necessary, we will continue this meeting. Uh, I need to make a statement at the beginning. Um, Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law C30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Andover Machine Shop Village Neighborhood District Committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder to persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by watching on your television or by visiting northandovercam.org um, or Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 26. So the way this is going to work, um, we're going to hear from the applicant and then the committee members will have discussion and after that we will open up for public comment. Public comment can be made by emailing the address posted in the um, meeting agenda which is online and was mailed to abutters. That email address is lfennessy at townofnorthandover.gov. And the documents are also available online through the meeting agenda. What we're going to do is when we're discussing a particular plan, when the presenter is presenting, um, what they will need to do is state the document name. Then they will need to state the page name if it's a multi-page document and then describe what, they are look, what we are all looking at. Um, the presenter, we are requesting that the presenter present through um, this online meeting so that the committee can visually follow along, follow along, but the public also needs to be able to follow along um, by hearing those descriptions through um, the CAM channel or online. Uh, I'm now going to um, ask for introductions of the committee. I've got um, Harry Asnoyan on, Jerry Wilson, Justin LaFond, and Jan, are you on? You may be on mute. Does anyone see Jan? We do have a quorum. But, okay. All right, maybe she's a little bit late. I would ask the um, applicant to introduce themselves and their uh, team, please. Uh, hi, this is uh, David Gillespie from Avalon Bay Communities. Uh, with me tonight is Ed Bradford from the architectural team, our architect, uh, Stephen Schwartz, our attorney from Goulston and Stores, and also um, Others, uh, Ray Bogus and Jess Camano. Uh, also, Tanya Hartford uh, is on um, representing the seller. We're buying the property from uh, RCG, who I think everyone is familiar with as the owner of the East and West Mills. Yes. Okay. Liz, Liz, this is Jean Enright. Can I just add one more piece of information? Sure. Um, so, for the public, if you are watching this on in a cam, there could be a few second delay on comments. However, you will only hear the meeting via audio recording. And if you want to access the information, you need to do that through the agenda link. All documents being referenced tonight will be linked to the agenda and you can follow along as Liz said, everything will be called out by file name and page number that is being discussed. Thank you, Jean. So now I'm going to read the second statement. I'm going to call the meeting to order, and I am now reading the second statement. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law C30A, section 18, and the governor's 
March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the town of North Andover Machine Shop Village Neighborhood Conservation District Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen to this meeting. Um, they do so on their televisions by turning to Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 26 or online at northandovercam.org. Members, members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment by emailing lfennessy at townofnorthandover.gov. And that email address and all the documents, as Jean said, are in the public agenda. Liz, Liz, I'm sorry, Jean and right again. Could you actually spell out your email address? Sure. L Fennessy, that's the first initial L, F is in Frank, E N N E S S Y at town of North Do you want me to spell all that? I'm going to assume that people can spell the name of the town. Um, okay, as we get going, I just want to let the applicant and remind the public that the purpose of this committee is to preserve the fabric of Machine Shop Village. We do this by reviewing changes um, and new construction for compatibility with the existing building setting in the neighborhood character. Uh, we have design guidelines, they're online at the town, on the town website stating uh, that new construction should be compatible and harmonious with the existing historic streetscape. The relationship of buildings to the street, including setbacks and open spaces should be considered. And attention is given by this committee to construction materials, massing and architectural details. Uh, I understand that this development has received its approvals from the planning board and CONSCOM. We will not be addressing those issues. We will be addressing the architectural details in the context of the character of the neighborhood. Do I have that correct, David, that you have CONSCOM and planning board? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. I will turn it over to the applicant to make their presentation. Liz, uh, yeah. Liz, again, I apologize, it's Jean, but when you gave out that email, you gave out town, town of North Andover .gov, Yes. That email should be North Andover MA.gov. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's lfantasy at northandovera.gov. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Did someone else want to say something before David started presenting? Okay. So, David, if you could share your documents that you present, present. And then as you do that, um, just describe the document name and which page so that the public can follow along. Okay, let me... Uh... Or whoever's presenting. Yeah, uh, let me let me just, um, I don't know if Ed Bradford, if you have the document up and you can present it, if not, I can. Uh, let me just start with a quick introductory comment and then we can uh, get the presentation up. The document for everyone's uh, that's following along is the document uh, 5720 AVB MSV presentation. That's the document we're gonna be using tonight. Um, all that document is, is a, um, the, a reshuffling maybe of some of the materials into a more of a presentation format that we felt was easier to follow along tonight, uh, given the virtual nature of this meeting. Uh, first, just quickly, uh, I'd like to uh, thank everyone uh, for making the accommodation to meet tonight uh, in this unusual time and in these unusual circumstances. I hope everyone is doing well at home and uh, families are well. Uh, this project has been under review in some form or fashion by the town of North Andover for over a year now. Uh, it is 170 units in two residential buildings with a single story clubhouse and Ed Bradford from TAT will walk through, um, walk through that design and how it fits into Machine Shop Village as a whole. Uh, as Liz, as we mentioned, we had the special permit in February and the order of conditions in March. Um, with that, I will 
turn it over to um, Ed, who, um, uh, first, let me try to share my screen. Um, Is this working for everyone? Looks like it's coming through. Okay, great. Um, very good. Uh, well, just... I don't know if you see it. Can you see it? Can anyone see it? Nope. Okay. I can see it. I Here. can see it. Well, if everyone, what I will do is, if some can see it and some can't, uh, I know Ed uh, just texted me. He got he got kicked off the call, so he's dialing back in right now. But I can I can start. Uh, what I'll do is, as I go through the presentation, if you are looking at the document five seven twenty AVB MSV presentation, I'll list the page number that we're looking at, and then people can scroll through on their own computers. So that we're all looking at the same document, and I'll describe it uh, as I'm as I'm talking about it. Uh, does that mean, does that Liz? Do you think that works? Yep. Okay. Great. Um, so first page is really um, a, 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 a version of the site. It's an aerial photograph that shows the site. Um, the site in question is uh, nine point five seven acres. It's hey Dave, excuse me. This is Ed. I just got on. If you want me to join oh, in, Ed, yeah, you can. You can take over. Uh, we're on page one of the uh, presentation. This okay, is yeah, MSV. Sorry about that. I got I got locked out for some reason. Okay, I just want to make sure I, I'm on the right one. MSV submission three sixteen twenty. No, it's uh, it's the presentation that we um, we reshuffled the to for presentation purposes. It's twenty three oh five oh seven five seven twenty. AVB MSV presentation. It was uh, something we sent this week just to. I think they changed the name. What's been posted on the town uh, that the public has access to is 2020-0507 Avalon North Andover Mills MSV presentation PDF. Okay. Is it, thir is it 36 sheets? Yes. Okay. So well, I think that's the same document. So okay. um, we'll go, we'll go for that. Okay. All right, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, um, sorry, everyone. Um, this is Ed Bradford, architect with the architectural team. So I'll, um, as Dave said, this is the first sheet um, showing its title existing conditions. And of course, shows just that this is an aerial of the existing conditions to show the broader context. The yellow line shows the boundary of the lot, as Dave just noted, nine and a half acres. Um, for orientation, uh, north is up. Um, so to the right of the site is High Street, the um, West Mill, and 50 High Street specifically is just below the, the site um, on the bottom part of the sheet. Uh, Sutton Pond and its parking lot are to the left or the west, Sutton Pond being the U-shaped um, building just to the left of our yellow boundary. And then to the north are our homes along Pearly Road. In the existing condition, the uh, parking lot occupies a large portion of the site, the front and the center portions of the site. And then you can see with this um, bright green line towards the rear corner of the lot uh, represents the outline of an existing uh, wetland that uh, informs our design. Uh, and then finally, an existing condition that, that also does play a, a pretty important role in our design layout is represented by the blue line or two blue lines that shows an existing utility easement that uh, runs directly uh, across the site. And then finally, on this exhibit, we did highlight in a red dashed line the outline of the Machine Shop Village District. And then if you kind of uh, look closely, you can see we highlighted an area with text that says approximately 0.7 acres within the machine shop village district. So that is the portion of our site, just a little over a half acre that uh, sits within the machine shop village district. So I wanted to highlight that. I'll move on to the second sheet. 
sheet. The second sheet is called proposed conditions. So what we have here is the same view that we just showed with the existing conditions, this time uh, showing our proposed design. In the next exhibit, I'll show you a, a little bit more detail or kind of zoomed in version of our site plan. So I won't spend a lot of time here talking about our site plan layout, but just again, wanted to show you our layout set in this larger context of the neighborhood and the machine shop village itself. So you can see we're proposing uh, three buildings labeled A, B, and C. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more detail on those in a second, but um, building A and B are both four-story buildings, 85 units each, and building C is a one-story clubhouse. And again, going back to that 0.7 acres of overlap, if you will, between uh, the Avalon North Andover Mills parcel and the Machine Shop Village, you can see that building A sits, um, or a good portion of building A sits within the district itself, but buildings B and C and the majority of the site are, are outside of the district to the north. I'll move to page three, which is called Site Plan. So here is an enlarged uh, view more detailed view of our site plan. As I said, the site plan includes three proposed buildings. Building A in this orientation is towards the bottom of the sheet. Below that, you can see uh, a portion of Sutton Pond condominium. And then in the right-hand corner of the site, you can see the West Mill and 50 High Street. Um, building A, again, is a, is a four-story, 85-unit building. Opposite that, you can see building B that kind of bends about the wetland and the wooded open space area that's behind it. And then building C, as I noted, is a, is a one-story clubhouse that is the amenity and leasing center for the complex. These three buildings form a, um, what we think will be a really wonderful kind of gracious outdoor space with a pool courtyard that's the um, primary recreational amenity for residents self-facing um, that's again framed open space by the three buildings. So the placement of the buildings is, is very much informed by the existing neighborhood and the context and, and consistent with the machine shop village design guidelines, we think compatible with the existing buildings in the neighborhood character and has very much been an emphasis in this design um, uh, hearing neighborhood in Put and working with planning board members and others in the community to really em uh, emphasize uh, uh, or minimize really the impact um, to a budding neighborhood. Moving on to um, page four, which is titled Context Photo, East Mill 43 and 45 High Street. So here we have a series of exhibits just to kind of take you on a, on, a, on a photo tour, if you will, of the existing context, primarily within the mill district itself. This first page, uh, as I said, page four is of 43 and 45 High Street and they're, and they're buildings like many of the others in the district that are, that are um, sort of solid uh, brick masonry buildings characterized by brick piers and and stone sills. Um, these are definitely features that I'll, I'll show you shortly in our proposed design that, that inform um, our design. Moving on to page five, it's titled West Mill 16 and 18 High Street, a context photo. And again, um, consistent with the prior image uh, kind of solid brick masonry building, punched openings. Um, again, that definitely influenced our proposed design. The next page is, is page six. It's titled um, West Mill, 50 High Street, and East Mill, 39 High Street. So in this view, you can see, uh, this is kind of looking north on High Street, 
to the left is is 50 High Street. Um, that's the building, as, as folks, many folks know, I'm sure, is known as the um, former cement building from about 1920. It has kind of larger openings than many of the other mill buildings. And again, uh, a, a kind of pattern that informs what, what we're proposing. And then on the right, on, along High Street in this view, is 39 High Street. Um, this building from about 1917 has a kind of horizontal banding of concrete lintels. Um, in a kind of horizontal pattern that um, influences us as well. This next page is, is page seven, and it's titled View of Sight from High Street Looking West. So in this case, now we're looking directly in, this is looking at our site. Um, we are right at the existing curb cut or entrance to the current site. This is also the um, proposed location for the new curb cut, new, excuse me, new curb cut, approximate location. So this would this would remain. In this view, you can see um, in the existing condition the Sutton Pond condominium uh, kind of terminating this vista down this driveway. You can also see in this view the um, power lines um, that are associated with the easement that I showed in the aerial photograph. So in the proposed design, um, uh, we'll locate these power lines um, below grade. This is, I'm moving on now to, to page eight. This is another context photo and it's titled um, View of Southwest Corner of Site and 50 High Street. So now we're we're at the uh, looking at the southwest corner of the site. As I said, um, you can see on the left hand side, uh, 50 High Street, and a kind of um, back of house of that building just beyond and, and to the right of it. And moving on again to to page nine. This is, a, again, another context photo it's titled View of Sight from High Street looking west. So this, again, is we're, we're now located about at the intersection of High Street and Prescott. Looking into the site, you can see the um, power easement is um, plays a pretty big role in the appearance of the site. And again, you can see the Sutton Pond condominiums just beyond. I'll move on to page 10, a um, couple more context photos and we'll move on to our proposed design. This, this now, page 10 is titled View of Northeast Corner of Site um, and 50 High Street. And so this again is from the Northeast Corner. This would be looking at the sidewalk that is, uh, bounds the site and kind of you'd be heading to the south towards the mill district if you walked along the sidewalk. And you can see just beyond there, again, uh, 50 High Street. Now I'm on page 11. This exhibit is called View from Interior of Site, Looking East and 50 High Street. So this is the, the last context photo that I have, but now we're, we're standing on the interior of the site, looking back out towards High Street. So again, you can see the, the power lines associated with the electric easement um, running through the site. And again, um, the closest building um, from the mill district, again, is, is 50 High Street. And you can see that on the right. So that was kind of a, 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 a kind of quick tour of the context that, that influences us in, in our design for sure. This, this next page is page 12, and it's called Aerial View uh, Proposed Design. So again, for orientation, um, in the upper left-hand corner of the site is, uh, are the mills, and again, the closest structure being 50 High Street in the upper left-hand corner. As we kind of move clockwise about the site, the, the red boundary uh, shows the, the property line of the site. So as we move kind of clockwise outside of that boundary, in the upper right-hand corner is the Sutton Pond 
condominiums. And then in the foreground on the bottom part of the site are the homes along High Street. On within our site, on the within the red boundary in the lower right hand corner, you can see the um, wetland and existing uh, wooded buffer as well. So again, uh, proposing three buildings, um, starting with um, building A is the building that's closest to 50 High Street and Sutton Pond condominiums. That's the, the uppermost uh, top part of the sheet. That is building A, again, uh, four stories. And we think it's a, a scale and massing that is very appropriate for the site. Uh, at this location. You, you can see, I think, a compatibility between its scale with not only 50 High Street, which is a bit taller than, than Building A, but a, a similar uh, massing. And then, of course, the Sutton Pond condominiums nearby as well. And then Building B is the um, four-story building towards the bottom of the sheet. Again, you can see it bending about the wetland, but again, um, placed like Building A away from the lower density homes along High Street, and in this case, a building that's very much oriented about the wetlands and, and the open space to the rear. And then the third building adjacent to that, again, is the one-story clubhouse, the amenity building and, and leasing center, the closest to the neighborhood, but again, purposefully located at that location because it's a scale that's certainly appropriate um, for the lower density neighborhood. So again, consistent with the, with the machine shop design guidelines, we think the size and the shape of the proposed buildings are appropriate to the context. Um, uh, by the way, there was, a, of course, as, as you likely know, a lot of input from the planning board and the neighbors that resulted in important refinements to the design and, and we think improved the design in, in this regard as well. Um, before I move on to a few street views, I just wanna highlight in this view, because I think it's helpful to see the larger context, our, our basic proposal for the architectural design, because it's, it's very much informed by, by the machine shop village architecture, and not only the language of the mill buildings themselves, but also the residential portions of the, of the machine shop village, as well as the, as the broader neighborhood. So, our, our design, you can, I think you can make out here, and, you, and if you can't, you will when I show you a more detailed view shortly. But for each of the four-story buildings, we're proposing a kind of um, uh, brick bookend, if you will, or end cap. So the ends of each of these buildings are, are clad in brick and in a kind of uh, architecture that responds um, very much to the mills. And we think it's appropriate in this context, again, to the architecture of the mills and, and also to the Sutton Pond condominium. And then between the brick bookends, if you will, of these end caps, there's a more residential texture that incorporates balconies and, and residential scaled windows and, and siding, and it provides a more distinctly uh, residential appearance. I'll move on to page 13. This is uh, titled View from High Street, November 2019. So what we have here now are a series of views from the public way, um, of course, High Street, showing the existing condition. That's what this shows, the existing condition. And then what we've done is we've cropped in our proposed design into these views so you can see the, um, the impact of our proposed designs on these particular vantage points. This one from High Street, we think is, is, is particularly important because of course we're, we're now standing within the Machine Shop Village District and it's really the only vantage point from the district where, where one could see, well, while standing within the district, one could see our proposed design. The, the boundary of the district would just be a few steps up High Street here. So what this existing condition shows is on the left, 50 High Street, and on the right, uh, 57 High Street, the one-story building. And then um, beyond, are, you can see the first um, home adjacent to our site on High Street, 
And in between that um, residential building and 50 High Street, of course, is our site. This again shows the um, November condition. We did uh, different views in different seasons to show the impact of um, trees with foliage and trees without. So this view moving on now shows the proposed condition. This is page 14. And it's a view again from High Street with the proposed condition. So in this case, you can see building A is visible. It's, um, if you're looking at the, the large structure of 50 High Street, it's just to the right there is the, is the end cap of building A. So again, um, consistent with their our kind of design approach, I think you can read a kind of solid masonry end cap with a, a flat roof that we think is complementary to the to the mill architecture. But also we've we've taken opportunity to incorporate kind of a, a more contemporary expression in some cases to kind of distinguish the proposed design from the existing mill. So in this case, kind of important from this vantage point, you can see a little bit lighter, more open corner of the building. And you can contrast that, of course, with 50 High Street and, and all the other mill buildings that have a, a more solid brick masonry corner. So again, lending a more kind of contemporary look for, for our proposed design. Even from this vantage point that is a ways away, you can start to read the, um, the brick piers as well. That's an important element in the design. But again, the basic concept is to orient these um, brick end caps um, towards the end of the buildings, and in this case, oriented towards the mill district, and then make a transition to the more residential structure as you move away from these end caps. So this view, again, is from um, the, the fall. The next view, page 15, is from this very same vantage point showing the existing condition, but this time in the spring. Um, that this was the exhibit, this particular exhibit we prepared for the planning board, they were interested in understanding the, um, the change again in season. I'll move on to page 16. Again, same vantage point, the same view from High Street, but of course you can see with um, foliage on the trees, the, the view to the proposed design in building A is, is obscured a bit by the trees and the foliage. Um, moving on now to page 17 is titled Panoramic View from High Street. So it, this again, we've like an earlier photo I showed, we've kind of moved up High Street. We're at the intersection with Prescott now, looking directly into the site. Again, 50 High Street to the left and the Sutton Pond condominiums um, beyond in the distance. Moving on to page 18, shows the same view now, of course, with the proposed condition. So you can see now, this is the same end cap of, of building A, that, that same masonry piece that is visible from, from High Street from this particular vantage point. And then um, you can see the parking that is in the foreground. We also prepared, I'm moving on to page 19, that's titled View from Sutton Pond Condominium Parking Lot. Again, this view was from the spring. Um, we prepared a, a couple views from um, the Sutton Pond Condominium, the parking lot and courtyard to understand um, the, this vantage point from that perspective. So in this view, in the existing condition, you can see the uh, four-story Sutton Pond condominium to the left, and then the site is basically straight ahead here. So this is um, page 20, shows the proposed condition from the same vantage point. So just like the opposite end on High Street, each end of the building of the four-story buildings has the same brick bookend. Um, we think it's just as appropriate end of the site as it is to High Street because again, um, we think it's complementary to the brick cladding that, that's on the Sutton Pond condominium. And this is a view now you can start to see the a more residential texture that fills in between the, between the brick end caps. So again, 
a residential texture of balconies. Uh, the windows are a little bit smaller, punched openings compared to the brick and, and horizontal siding. Again, a, a stronger residential texture between the brick end. <clears throat> and then one more view from, from Sutton Pond Condominium. This is within the courtyard of their um, um, building in the parking lot. This shows the existing condition. It, it, this view is called View from Sutton Pond Condominium Parking Lot, November. Again, this is the existing condition. And now moving on to page 22. Again, same vantage point, you can see our proposed design. The, uh, from this vantage point, the, the building is even, um, is not particularly visible. And that's because this is actually um, building B. So it's a, it's a quite a ways away. So from this perspective, it's, it's cut off. <clears throat> and then there is a, a large row of plantings or trees along the boundary that um, obscure our view from this, from this vantage point. Um, moving on to page 23. So the next two exhibits, we look at um, two options for a proposed material and color palettes. And, and this time, a lot closer view than some of the views that, that we showed in prior exhibits. Um, this particular view is of building A. So it's the view of the south elevation of building A. The corner on the right <coughs> that you see in the, in the brick end cap, that is the same corner that we were looking at when we were out on High Street, from that perspective from High Street, just to give you um, orientation. So again, um, two kind of material palettes uh, are proposed. The, the brick uh, uh, end cap on the right, and then the more, more residential texture is shown on the left. And again, the goal, the goal is to complement the existing mills, but also, again, as I noted, to incorporate uh, contemporary elements and give a, but importantly, also give a distinctly residential feel. We want to make clear that this is a residential building, of course. So the the brick takes its cues from from the mill buildings. It's kind of, as I noted, this simple rectangular massing. Here now you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the the brick piers, and in this case, the horizontal banding in this case of, of precast concrete that um, are influenced by some of the other buildings that I uh, showed earlier out on High Street, particularly 39 High Street and 50 High Street with, in this case, the kind of larger masonry openings that are proposed. Um, so we in introduce, as I said, these kind of more contemporary elements at the corner that give it a little bit more contemporary expression. And then um, to the left of that, we're proposing, uh, again, this more residential texture that, um, again, has a similar rectangular massing, but it's broken up by these vertical slots of balcony. So the, the vast majority of um, proposed units in the community do uh, include balconies. So in this case, in this darker color of the metal railing to kind of lend a, a little bit more in industrial look, and then the cladding of the residential portion is in horizontal uh, siding in two colors, uh, this kind of warmer wood-like tone on the base that then runs up into the balcony slots. And then the three stories above that, second, third, and fourth story are clad in this, um, again, horizontal clapboard uh, texture above. And then kind of woven through both of these textures are these <coughs> colored uh, cement board elements, a vertical one and a horizontal one that kind of weave their way through both the siding and through the brick elements. So you can see these gray vertical elements that are located generally within the window openings. And then within the same opening, these uh, darker horizontal elements that kind of lend the appearance of a, of a larger a larger opening within that field. And then uh, finally, um, as our original application was in March, we, we have had some time to think about this and then develop the design further. And we include this 
um, alternative for your review as well. So this is again the same exact view as I just shown, but with a different kind of color palette that we think is um, compared to the last one a little bit more fitting um, with the mill district and um, it maybe lends a little bit more industrial look that we think is appropriate. The, the biggest change between the last one, again, is this more kind of cooler palette that incorporates, in this case, a darker gray base and then a darker gray color up into the balcony slots. But then um, I think importantly, the cement board accents are much more prominent. So that vertical accent that was shown in alternative one now incorporates this red color that we think provides a little bit more visual interest, a little bit more kind of lively element. And then the horizontal panel we think is woven through both textures a little bit more successfully. So again, in the residential texture, you can see the horizontal gray cement board panel. And then that element, in this case over in the brick, we kind of bring that into the brick element to kind of tie, tie the two together. Again, just like the last scheme, you can see the, the balconies and the darker color and the metal railing uh, lending that little bit more industrial look. Um, so that does uh, represent uh, the presentation. There's, there are other slides, um, but they're really only for reference. So we have this appendix that was included in the application floor plans, and we have uh, elevations of all the buildings should we want to refer to them but um, kind of culled that down to this uh, smaller presentation. So um, thank you, thanks for your patience and happy to take any of your questions. Thanks, um, I have a clarifying question. Um, so I'm looking at page 24, this alternate two and your, the orientation you're showing, when you describe this, we're looking at the side here, but um, what machine shop village the what this commission is um one of the triggers is what's visible from a public way and, and on a previous uh drawing or i think earlier on in this presentation you talked about the brick end cap and let me just i'll find for the public's benefit which one i'm referring to so basically uh drawings are page 14 page 16 that's what's view from that's the view from the public way within machine shop village. Um, yes. So when I go back to just going through page 23 and 24, we're really looking at that brick end cap. We're not looking at the side. Yeah, that's right. Um, the brick end cap is what is primarily visible from High Street. The yep. 50 High Street would cut off for the most part the view to the left of the brick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do the other committee members have questions? This is Jerry. Um, I basically had the same question, Liz, as uh, the view of how you would see the transition from the brick to the fiber cement or vinyl siding um, portion of the, the building from, from the public view. Um, biggest one being um, right at the intersection where Prescott is, but yeah, that's actually outside our. Yeah, I know. That's it's... outside the the boundary of Machine Shop Village. I mean, this is really when on page twenty three. This is the only portion of the building that's within Machine Shop Village. Yeah, everything to the left of that is. Uh... Honestly, I, I think you would probably only see that if you were walking and happened to glance to your left. Vehicular traffic, you'd hardly ever notice it. You'd be going by so fast. Yeah, do you have in your appendix or anything, anything that shows, I'm just flipping through, but I would have you refer to specific. Um, so I'm looking at, uh, I guess this is sheet 29 out of 36. Could you describe what we're looking at there? 
or if there's a better one, I guess what I'm trying to see is which, uh, are there other angles as Jerry referred to that, that would kind of give you a sense of what do you see when you're walking by? I think, I think number 14 and 15 and 16, 17 are good. Or, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, number one on this page that we're looking at right here is that same view. Yes, so that's page 29, uh, view number one. That's the view that you just saw Correct. close up. And then the view above that is the view that you see from Sutton Pond condominiums that we highlighted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let me find the end cap because I think that's what you're looking for, right? Is the view of that end cap? Yeah, that's where our biggest area of focus is. Yeah, let me find that. Um, And do you know which elevation building? Yeah, is? yeah, oh, I, I would go to page, page, um, that's it right page there. 31. Yeah, so it's four on 31. Yes, yeah. that that I shows the, four um, on 31 is the, is the brick end cap facing high street. Which isn't actually in Machine Shop Village. And maybe only this very slight corner of it. Yeah. And, and the reason we showed that elevation then where it turns the corner is because that's in Machine Shop Village. Yeah. And highlighting all of the materials that we're using. So yeah. it's sort of a good one-stop elevation to really highlight everything that we were doing. But I, I think you're right that in some of those views from High Street, this this brick end cap is really what you're going to. Yeah, that's what you're going to be seeing. Yeah. I mean, other other than that, material-wise, I mean, it's your choice. But I was just curious why you have fiber, fiber cement on the lower half, and then you switch to a vinyl siding up above. Why not stick with the same color? Just stay with fiber cement. Yeah, that's a more a better material. Yeah. And you already got you already got fiber cement down on the first floor, and then two through four, you switch to a, a vinyl. Yeah, in in this case, in one of the versions, we were looking at a at a more wood like um, texture, which is hard to get in the vinyl. But but frankly, we've been finding on other communities we've we've on some other communities we've done with Avalon Bay that the the vinyl is um is is holding up pretty well actually compared to the cement board. If you kind of go out ten years, it's 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 holding up better. So, um, but it's really, we, we think the kind of combination of, of all of these materials um, that are kind of important. So it, it's pretty common for us to kind of mix and match the, the vinyl and the cement board in order to kind of pull off a, a, the total execution of the design. Are there other questions from the committee? Hi, Liz. This is Harry. <clears throat> Hi. I have a couple questions. So, on the agenda, currently, the article in front of us is for uh, alteration or variance. Um, it's an application for a certificate. So not a variance. We don't grant variances. Because it says on the agenda variance. Does it say variance? Uh -huh. right. I mean, I think it, we have our application. What you know, what we issue is the is the certificate to alter. Okay. And secondarily, um, this is a question for Ed. So in the views, Ed, part of the public way, as it's defined in Machine Shop Village, 
would also encompass the view looking out from the, the uh, retail stores in, in the mill section. So in my, that would in also would mean that we would see basically the whole facade across that parking lot. And I did not see that viewpoint rendition. That is still, that is public way, not just the street. Tanya, is that public way? Or your private property? Are you, Harry, what, where are you referring to? So if I was standing, for example, at the retail stores like the Jade restaurant and, um, you know, those series of, of uh, retail stores and looked across the, the, the way, I would see that, that building, that structure. Right, but I'm not sure if that's a view from a public way. Time. That is a public way. That's public parking. That's public way. Private. I think it's privately owned and available to the public. But if Tanya's still on and she's on mute, could you clarify? Are you the owner of that parking lot? I understand it's publicly accessible, but I'm not sure that it's actually a public way. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. It is not a public way. Okay. So the Jade parking lot, the public way is High Street, and then um, the rest of that is all private. I, I would just add this, though, um, to the comment that the elevation that we showed is the elevation you would see from that parking lot. So the elevation that we showed that had the, the brick on the right-hand side and then went to the... You're talking about page 23 or 24? 23 or 24. If you yeah. are looking from that parking lot, that's the elevation you would see. Do I have that right, Ed? Yeah, I think so. You get a kind of diagonal view as well of the, as you turn the corner, but primarily that would be the view that is kind of most directly in your line of sight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, or perpendicular to your view, if you will, but you would, you would certainly see the um, elevation that turns the corner as well. If, if, you, if you look at page 12, which was the uh, isometric that Ed put together and you, and you, you, and you see where that parking lot is, and then you look, uh, past the backside of 50 High Street, you see that yeah. that elevation, you'll, that's gonna be your elevation, which is the one that we have in 23 and 24. Okay. Um, we are at 6.53 and mm -hmm. uh, we were to end at 6.50, although we had five kind of emergency minutes, although I'm sure Cam is getting antsy. Um, we're going to need to continue this meeting because we do have some questions from the public and I don't think we're through the committee's discussion. So <clears throat> I am going to uh, continue this meeting. We're going to need to find a mutually agreeable date to, um, to do that. And I'll close for now. Are there any, any uh, final comments or Bernadette, do I need to do anything besides that to close an online meeting? Nope, that should be fine. Okay, so what we'll need to do is find that date and then um, will we need to be at two weeks out, Bernadette? Um, we have to advertise it 48 hours before the meeting online. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Then we will continue the meeting. Thank you all very much for having us tonight and accommodating us with this uh, online meeting. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Thank you.